Hello, my name is Elaine Spaulding, President of the Rowan Chamber. It's my pleasure to call on Carmen Harper, Director of Alumni Engagement and Annual Giving with Hood Theological Seminary for our invocation. Carmen? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you as a community today, thankful for your love, your protection, and your many blessings. Thankful for 95 years of success and prosperity in our community. Although 2020 was challenging to many, we are hopeful that 2021 will be filled with blessings and many successes to come within our community. As we move forward, let us not forget that we need each other and that we need you and your favor in our lives. We're thankful for the Rowan Chamber and the businesses within our community. Be with us, Father God, as we move forward in this event and in the year 2021 and in the years to come. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Carmen. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Rowan Chamber, we would like to welcome you to our 95th annual meeting and Power and Partnership webinar. We wish we could be with you in person. Our annual gala meetings are always so much fun with over 350 members enjoying fellowship and good food. However, our annual gala committee, chaired by Cindy Hart, has planned a wonderful virtual program for you today. We're working on a super duper business after hours mixer at the Bell Tower Green Park in the fall, and we'll be back in January of 2022 with our regular annual gala format. The Chamber has been blessed this year with generous sponsors. The 95th annual meeting sponsors are Novant Health, Rowan Medical Center, title sponsor. Our program sponsors are Duke Energy Carolinas, F&M Bank, Trinity Oaks, and Premier Federal Credit Union. We would like to thank all the corporate sponsors listed on the screen too. Thank you so much. Our Rowan Chamber Board of Directors are a diverse group of community leaders that decide public policy for the organization. They make sure we are being good stewards of your chamber investment. We appreciate your time and talent. Since this is the Chamber's 95th annual meeting, we especially want to recognize all the past chairs of the organization.
organization. The Rowan Chamber was officially chartered on March 19, 1925. It began as the Salisbury Chamber of Commerce and later expanded to the Rowan County Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber's first annual report shows support for bringing Catawba College to Salisbury, lobbying for better roads, and work on establishing a creamery in the community. Thanks to all our past chairs who have led this chamber. The Rowan Chamber is a private 501c6 not-for-profit organization serving our members with business advocacy, workforce development, and member services. We have worked very hard this past year to provide even more services to our members to help them survive and thrive during the pandemic. Please remember to buy local. Let's hear from a few of our members about what they value most in their Rowan Chamber. Hello, Rowan County Chamber of Commerce family. I am Nicole Holmes Matangira of Holmes Iron and Metal and Matangira Curbside Recycling. And listen, I gotta share with you just a few nuggets. I don't have much time, but I want to tell you something so amazing um, that I have really become one of my greatest loves about the chamber are the people that you meet. I love business after hours. It's a great opportunity to be able to get to know the community. And I tell people that may be wanting to join the chamber for the first time, don't just come into the chamber just to think, I'm just coming to, to grab business real quickly because there's something greater than that. There's an opportunity to be able to connect with people. And that's the one thing that I love about your chamber family. This is, this is, this is a family. So when we come together and connect, there is so much that takes, there's so much that's being established. There are lifelong friendships and relationships that are being established that you just can't go in a store and buy. And I have to say thank you to Chamber of Commerce family for being able to offer this amazing um, opportunity. Hi, my name is Alyssa Redman. I'm the owner of South Main Book Company on Main Street in Salisbury, North Carolina. And I joined uh, the Rowan Chamber probably before I even bought the bookstore. I think it was probably the day after or something that I'd signed the paperwork. I joined the chamber and I joined because so many different people in the community that I was meeting with uh, recommended the membership and particularly highlighted uh, Elaine Spaulding's magnificent uh, leadership qualities and uh, her networking ability and her ability to introduce you to all of the, the people that you needed to know in town. And as a new person who had just arrived in town, maybe within a week or so of purchasing the bookstore and joining the chamber, that was very necessary for me and never regretted <laughs> Uh, the membership fee for a second. Uh, Elaine does everything that she can to highlight my business when it's appropriate. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed the events that I have been able to attend. Uh, there were just a handful before COVID, but I'm looking forward to getting back into full strength soon uh, and seeing people in the community, not just in my bookstore as customers, but as uh, folks that, that we, you know, can share information and networking capabilities together. And uh, hopefully this year is going to be an amazing one for the chamber and for myself. And I look forward to everything that that's coming. And I thank Elaine and everyone at the chamber for all that they do. So thanks. Hi, I'm Pam Cofield, owner of Stitch and Post Gifts in downtown Salisbury. This is my 46th year in business and my 36th year as a chamber member. I became a chamber member because I wanted to uh, support and invest in an organization that would support and invest in me. The one thing I value most about our chamber is its responsiveness in difficult times. Last year, we were shut down because of COVID, as were many businesses, and it was a very difficult time, very, very strange. I had lots of questions that could not be answered. No one knew the answers. It was uncharted territories. So I reached out to Elaine at the chamber to help, and she quickly responded and put me in touch with state leaders 
who quickly responded and were, they were able to help me with all the answers to my questions. Now that's the chamber working for me during difficult times. A chamber member means credibility. And I am proud to be a chamber member and I'm proud to be a Rowan County original. It's my pleasure to introduce our 2020 Chair of the Board, Gary Blabon. Gary was officially named the President and COO at Novant Health Rowan Medical Center in March of 2020, right at the start of the pandemic. He certainly has had a challenging year, but he provided excellent leadership to the Chamber as we were struggling with gathering restrictions, how best to keep our members safe, and business recovery efforts. Gary was the right leader at the right time for the Chamber. Please welcome Gary to the podium. We had a 2020 vision of how we were going to serve the business community last year, then COVID socked us in the eye. The Chamber started off with a strong and fantastic annual gala, Power and Partnership Breakfast, and other events in January and February. Then March hit. We had to cancel our special 2020 Salute to Agriculture Power and Partnership and the April Power and Partnership, which Novant Health usually sponsors. By the May Power and Partnership and Leadership Rowan graduation, we were doing virtual webinars and Zoom chamber meetings. The chamber has continued to serve the business community in new and creative ways this year. It's been a tough year for all of us. However, your chamber has continued to provide exceptional service to its members. Let me cover just a few of the highlights. First, business advocacy. Rowan Economic Recovery Task Force. The chamber led the formation of this task force and worked with our community partners to provide valuable information to businesses and displaced workers. The Chamber, Rowan EDC, and Tourism all work together with business recovery initiatives, and we are proud of this partnership. The Chamber held dozens of webinars and hundreds of Zoom meetings to educate small businesses about how to apply for various loans and grants. Chamber staff members personally made over 300 calls to small businesses just to see how they were doing and make sure that they were aware of the resources available. We have received excellent feedback on the communications the Chamber has provided on business openings and gathering restrictions. We held two candidate forums in 2020, one for the primary election one for the fall state legislative races. Education and Workforce Development. Workforce Development Alliance has continued to meet virtually and are matching the needs of employers in education and training resources for many of our employers struggling to find enough workers. The Chamber and Rowan EDC are working on talent attraction plan, so stay tuned for more to come on that. Groundhog Job Shadowing Day, we were able to place students with businesses early February of 2020 and recently conducted a virtual job shadow day with Rowan Salisbury students. Job fairs were held with a virtual option for employers and job seekers. Leadership Rowan class number 28 is having a unique experience. They have started off their retreat at Morgan Ridge in a hybrid class session with some in-person and some virtual. Membership and marketing, targeted programs to better serve the members of the chamber. Minority Business Council, this group has really thrived with virtual meetings and are working on business leaders in the Angel Investment Fund. Young Professionals recently started back up with virtual network events. Women in Business, excellent mix of social and professional development programs. Power and Partnership meetings have been without breakfast recently, and we're really missing our friends at Trinity Oaks. However, the speakers for the virtual Power and Partnerships have been fantastic, and we appreciate everyone's support of this virtual format. Ambassadors have recently begun holding ribbon-cutting events with limits on attendance and participating 
in social distancing and face coverings. There are still chamber members requesting this service of the chamber. Business after hour mixers were done virtually and some creative options like picking up wine and cheese goodies before the event. Our campaign, Bob Honeycutt led a successful campaign with 51 new members and exceeded our total investment goal. Dragon Boat Festival, the 2020 event was unfortunately canceled. However, Daniel Monteguerra is chairing the event this year scheduled for July 24th, 2021. Our financials, the chamber, the finance committee made sure that we're in good stewards of our membership investments and 2020 year and financials showed a positive net income. We ended the year in the black. I would like to thank the board members who completed their term and rolled off the board at the end of 2020. Mike Beaver, Beaver Brothers Incorporated, Kevin Davis, Belk, Dr. Melody Denton Dombrowski, Salisbury Eyewear and Eye Care, Elia Gagoric, Gagoric and Associates Realty, Bill Johnson, Trinity Oaks, Rita Foyle, Rowan Salisbury Schools, Nicole Holmes Monteguerra, Holmes Iron and Metal. Finally, I'd like to especially thank the 2020 Executive Committee, Rita Foyle, Division Chair, Education Workforce, Rowan Salisbury Schools, Alan Burke, Treasurer, Alan Burke CPA, Terry Osborne, Division Chair, Business Advocacy, Rowan ABC Board, Starling Johnson Kaklamanos, Division Chair, Membership, Johnson Concrete, Nicole Holmes Monteguerra, Past Chair, Holmes Iron and Metal, and Bob Honeycutt, Chair Elect, FM Bank. Speaking of Bobby Honeycutt, it is now time to pass the gavel to him. Thanks, Gary. You get a gavel, and it's going to take an axe to get through 2021. Thank you, Gary, for an outstanding year during unpredictable times. Without a doubt, the chamber had the right guy in the right place at the right time. And no, I'm not a doctor, but I am playing one for this video today. I'm honored to serve as the Rowan Chamber's chair of the board for 2021. In January 2020, Gary kicked us off with two claps, and one of my favorite wrestler's signature yells. And even though I wanted to come dressed as Ric Flair today and continue the wrestling theme, well, frankly, I just didn't think I had enough swag to pull it off. What I do hope to do is finish the vision you gave us, Gary. We've all sat in the chair at our eye doctor's office, leaned into the vision equipment, while the doctor flips the wheel and asks, one or two, two or three. Well, it's time for two and one. And with the help of our chamber team and over 800 chamber members, it's our goal to completely restore Gary's clear vision for 2020 and make 21 the best year yet. On behalf of the chamber's board, its staff, and its membership, Gary, thank you for a great year. Please accept the chamber's plaque for 2020. Thank you, and I look forward to working with Bob, the 2021 board, in my role as immediate past chair. Thank you, Bobby. Dr. Bob had an emergency, and I'll be finishing the rest of the annual meeting as the chair of the board for 2021. No doubt, 2020 was a tough year, but here we are standing in April, and we're off to a great start, and things are looking brighter every day. The Chamber recently conducted a membership survey, and we're pleased to share some of the results with you. 98% of the members are very satisfied or satisfied with their membership. Business advocacy remains a top priority, and business recovery efforts from the pandemic are the most concerning to our members, with the following statistics being reported. 69% had decreased revenues in 2020. 11% had revenues down more than 50%. 36% experienced supply chain issues. And another 33% have a need for increased funding. The results from the survey 
matched the key focus areas of the Chamber in 2021. At the Chamber's board retreat in October of 2020, we established the following top priorities. The top priorities for 2021 are number one, business advocacy. In a post-COVID world, it is going to be more important than ever to be a strong voice for the business community at all levels of government. We will be advocates for increased funding for the struggling businesses. Number two, diversity outreach. We will identify and leverage opportunities for diversity, racial equity, and inclusion. Create targeted communications that build diverse member engagement. When you focus on inclusion, diversity shows up. Number three, youth leadership. We will research the feasibility of a two-year youth leadership program with high school seniors facilitating the sessions for high school juniors. Number four, business and education partnerships. We plan to be the connector between business and education with a focus on skill trades and technical career paths. And finally, number five, workforce development and talent attraction. We will develop a talent attraction plan with our community partners that highlights post-COVID attributes of Rowan County. Of course, we can't accomplish our goals without the Chamber's board, executive committee, committee chairs, volunteers, and especially our members. Please join me in thanking the rest of our 2021 Executive Committee. Brad Walser, our Chair-Elect. Brad is with Walser Technology Group. Alan Burke, our Treasurer. Alan Burke, CPA. Andrew Smith, our Division Chair for Education and Workforce Development. Andrew is with Rowan Salisbury Schools. Terry Osborne, our Division Chair for Business Advocacy, Rowan County, ABC. Starling Johnson, our division chair for membership. Starling was, is with Johnson Concrete. And Gary Blabon, our immediate past chair, Navant Health Rowan Medical Center. And our new board members for 2021, Alicia Bird-Clark, Jim Stone's Bird Staffing, Bill Godley, Godley's Garden Center, Daniel Montangera, Montangera Recycling, Ellen Robertson, Fisher Realty, and Andrew Smith, Rowan Salisbury Schools. We appreciate and thank all of our continuing board members and community partners. Let's have a great year. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. We look forward to working with you the rest of 2021. We'd like to turn the program over to one of our community partners, Rod Kreider, the president and CEO of Rowan EDC. Hi. I'm Rod Kreider, President and CEO of the Rowan Economic Development Commission. I want to congratulate the Rowan County Chamber of Commerce on its 95th anniversary. The Chamber is a necessary and important part of our community. It provides great value to its members by offering business assistance, advocacy, and networking opportunities. Their work makes our community a better place to live and a more competitive business location. And for those reasons, they are an essential partner in the EDC's growth efforts. You can count on the Chamber to lead during difficult times, and they certainly proved that over the past year. 2020 delivered a global pandemic that brought chaos and uncertainty to our lives. COVID-19 restricted our movement and ability to shop or dine out. Businesses were hit hard, and the Chamber stepped up to assist them in a way that only the Chamber can. Working together with the Tourism Development Authority and the EDC, the Chamber provided information, resources, and assistance to the business community. Collectively known as the Gateway Partners, these three groups responded quickly and decisively to the threat of the pandemic. The partners quickly changed course from their daily responsibilities to respond to the pandemic and the toll it was taking on local businesses by communicating about the latest orders from the governor on safety protocols being put in place and how to access business assistance programs. They helped people who were laid off from their jobs due to the pandemic get training and find work in other industries. They assisted businesses with sourcing personal protective equipment like masks and sanitizers. 
They set up a database to communicate which businesses were open and whether home delivery or curbside pickup was available. They help businesses secure paycheck protection program loans. And now the chamber and its partners stand ready to assist businesses and the community adjust to a new normal, whatever that may be. One of the ways the Rowan EDC is helping to create a more flexible and sustainable economy for the future is through the Forward Rowan campaign that was launched last year. With the support of the chamber, the EDC secured 1.25 million in funding from local businesses to support a more proactive economic growth effort for Rowan County. We want to thank the many businesses that demonstrated their commitment to reducing poverty, increasing prosperity, and improving the quality of life in Rowan County by investing in this campaign. It is a rather remarkable testament to them that they would step up in such a big way to support Rowan County during a global pandemic while faced with tremendous challenges of their own. We also want to thank the Chamber Board and its President Elaine Spaulding and her staff for taking bold actions during the difficulties of the past year. You have demonstrated the tremendous value that the Chamber has brought to Rowan County for 95 years and why we need to continue to have an organ a strong and viable Chamber organization for the next 95 years. Thank you and we look forward to working with you to move Rowan County forward. We'd like to turn the program over now to one of our other community partners, James Meacham, CEO of Rowan County Tourism Development Authority. James? Greetings, Rowan County Chamber of Commerce, businesses, and community organizations. My name is James Meacham, and I have the pleasure of serving Rowan County as the Chief Executive of the Rowan County Tourism Development Authority. 2020 and the start of 2021 has certainly been a challenging year, especially in the hospitality sector. But the one thing that we have realized and that I really want to share with you today is a big thank you. A thank you to you as businesses, members of the Chamber of Commerce, members of this community for rallying together during these unprecedented and challenging times. The ability for you as businesses and members of our community to support many of our local businesses in these challenging times has really helped separate Rowan County from other communities. The fact that we've been able to rally around and provide support to the restaurants, hotels, sites, attractions, arts and culture institutions, which have largely been crippled by COVID-19 and their impact on the community, has shown a great resiliency in this community. It's an honor to be here and it's an honor to serve with you. I wanna thank everybody in the Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Commission, and the Tourism Authority for coming together early during this pandemic back in March of 2020. We've made continuous efforts to improve the economy based on the challenges we face. We've strived to make our lives better in these challenging times. We've also strived to support the businesses that we call home here in Rowan County. Moving forward into 2021, we're hoping to see some light at the end of this tunnel. The sector which I largely support and represent, the hospitality sector, has probably been one of the hardest hits. Most of our businesses are down anywhere from 30 to 60% from the year before. But with the help of many of our local leaders, we've been able to provide on this community level grants directly for small businesses, grants directly for um, restaurants, and many of that's thanks to our Rowan Board of Commissioners and their efforts to provide stimulus money to support. We've also been able to provide lots of information to businesses on the federal programs that are available, such as PPP, economic injury distress loans through the SBA, and information on how they can provide resources to support their businesses and their workers. My plea to you as we move into 2021 is to continue to support these businesses. Continue to support our arts and culture institutions who still have largely been closed over a year. Continue to support our sites, our attractions, our restaurants, our hotels. Your effort to support them not only supports those businesses, but also supports the workers that call those businesses home, that they earn their living at those businesses and at those locations. It is critical that as we move into 2021, we remember who we are as a community. We remember our brand to be an original. We support our original businesses. We support our original entities that call this place home. It's interesting to step back and look heading into 2020, we were coming out of just a record year in 2019. Just looking at four of our major events alone, Autumn Jubilee, Cheerwine Festival, Polar Express, and a day out with Thomas, over 150,000 people came to those four events alone. That's more than the entire population of Rowan County. So we went from one year with that to the next year with none. 
And as we're hoping to get back to that area and that, that level of engagement with the community, we're hoping that you're going to support those efforts as we continue to move through this pandemic and we continue to support these businesses. I just want to close by saying thank you again. Your resiliency, your willingness to stay a part of the Chamber of Commerce, your willingness to support these businesses and support this community is what continues to make Rowan County a great place to live, work, and visit. Thank you for your service and thank you for your commitment to the community. It's now time for the awards presentation. There have been so many fantastic people helping our community this past year. We'd like to lift up each and every one of you. Thanks to our elected officials, our first responders, our healthcare workers, truck drivers, and frontline workers, we appreciate you. The Chamber presents three annual awards. First, the Paul E. Fisher Volunteer of the Year, second, Chamber Champion Small Business of the Year, and third, Duke Energy Citizenship and Service Award. With the help of Joe Girdler with JG Media, we were able to produce some publisher clearinghouse style surprise videos, roll tape. So surprise. <laughs> no joke. No joke. So I know that you thought you were here for another award presentation, but this one's for you. <laughs> it's my privilege to present the Paul E. Fisher Chamber Volunteer of the Year Award to Ms. PJ Ricks. The criterion for this. <laughs> The criterion for this award includes a Rowan Chamber volunteer that embodies the ideals of volunteerism and provides leadership in a key area, someone who has made significant contributions towards the goals and mission of the Chamber in 2020, and someone who donated time and resources willingly and enthusiastically to the Chamber. Yes. There's no question <laughs> that PJ Ricks has, meet these, has met these criteria and more. PJ is a chamber ambassador, always showing up to help the chamber at ribbon cuttings, mixers, and power and partnership breakfasts. She is a leadership Rowan graduate involved with our minority business council. She ran for city council and didn't quite make the vote. However, she still continued to show up in all her glory. Yes, she did. <laughs> for community events. During the pandemic, PJ has helped tremendously. She's always in her car running errands for senior citizens, she volunteers with Rowing Helping Ministries. She serves on the Salisbury Rotary Club Board, <laughs> serves on the City of Salisbury's Planning Board, and sings at Crown and Glory Lutheran Church. PJ is a native of Salisbury, graduated from Livingstone College, and is a retired educator and alcohol abuse counselor. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me congratulate the 2020 Paul E. Fisher Chamber <laughs> Volunteer of the Year, PJ Ricks. All really got me. I'm the one who usually tries to do surprises for everybody else, but I had no idea, and you had to have known. And I don't know about these three. <laughs> my son, my daughter, and my, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. This means so much to me, especially since it's Paul's. It's named for Paul because he was a dear friend and a confidant, and, and I really cared. We, we miss him so, so very much in this community. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, thank you. I'm Gary, how are you? How are you doing? Well, Cheryl, you thought you were here for something else, didn't you? I did. You did. <laughs> I did. Can I let you in on a little secret? Sure. We're here for you. Oh, you are. We are here for you. Yes. yes. Cheryl, it is my pleasure to present you with the Chamber Champion Small Business of the Year. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And this is presented to Cheryl Goins with Pottery 101. Oh. And this is presented by your Chamber of Commerce to a small business in our community that has just done outstanding work. Amen. Yes. So we'll yes. 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 Yes
This oh. award you is to a oh. chamber member, a small business in Rowan County with less than 100 employees. The business has achieved growth in measurable areas, such as sales, number of employees, and other key benchmarks that determine the impact on the job market, supports the community through financial and personal commitment, and Cheryl, this year, we added supports diversity, equity, and inclusion. Amen. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. So this is a little bit about Cheryl and the work that she's done in our community and outside of our community. Cheryl has been committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion her entire adult life. In the best tradition of Christian service, for many years, Cheryl cleaned Centro Latino in Hickory, North Carolina, paying special attention and loving attention to all the important bathrooms. She has been involved in the Baranibus connection, bringing art to low and racially diverse children since before Pottery 101 opened. In August 2020, during the summer of racial justice issues, Cheryl placed a large window-sized Black Lives Matter poster in front of the window of Pottery 101. For months, the poster was a fun place for justice supporters to take pictures. Pottery 101 has been open and a member of the Rowan County Chamber for 12 years, and Cheryl has been a potter for over 20 years. In addition to her own work at Pottery 101, she represents over 30 artists within the shop here. Cheryl is a graduate of Arizona State University with a Bachelor of Arts in Art History and Fine Arts program at Central Piedmont Community College. She is a member of St. John's Lutheran Church, married to the one and only yes. Ted Goins, yes. and has two adult children and two grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, one please one. help me welcome <laughs> and congratulate Cheryl Goins. The mic is yours, ma'am. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you surprised me. Um, I'm glad I didn't come down as casual as I was going to come down today. <laughs> uh, and I'm hopeful that Ted would have stopped me if I was. Um, I, just, I just don't know what to say. It's, it's, I can't believe we've been here this long. Um, it's been a joy. Uh, I tell people all the time we live in such a supportive community. Uh, that supports the arts, that stepped up after COVID when we opened our doors back up and just didn't know what to expect and um, supported us. So that's all I have to say, but thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Miss Sue. Hey, How are you? <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, I think you're doing well today. I am. Well, Miss how are you? I was doing good, but now I'm overwhelmed. I'm just so glad to see everybody. Well, we're glad to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're glad yeah, to see you. Yeah. This is a crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a crew. Oh, it's Miss yeah. yeah. Robin. Hey, Miss Robin. So, Miss Sue Fisher yes. family on behalf of the chamber. I have a few folks here from the chamber and what some, and some, uh, <laughs> well, and some well, I'm honored. I am totally honored. And some volunteers as well. And um, we have a few folks that would like to say something to you guys. Good afternoon. Fisher family, I'm Randy Welch of Duke Energy, and it's my honor to be with you today. And uh, we have a very special award that we want to share with you today. And you can see we've had a few folks here that have gathered to, to be a part of this. And, um, you know, we want to share with you that the highest honor that the Chamber has uh, for its annual meeting each year is the Duke Energy Citizenship and Service Award. And we want to present it this year to the late Paul E. Fisher. Oh, thank you so much. And I want to share with you a little bit about the criteria for this award so you'll understand how important it is and the contributions that the expectations are to share with the community. First of all, this is, award is granted to a Rowan Chamber or group of individuals that demonstrates a commitment to service and civic participation over a sustained period of time in the community. Second, this person or group would set a standard or foster a culture of citizenship, service, and personal responsibility. And then third, this person or group would have demonstrated 
one or more of these business values, integrity, stewardship, inclusion, and initiative. And we all know over Paul's life, he demonstrated all those characteristics. And we are forever grateful for all that he has done for our community as a lasting legacy to the community for what all he has done. I want to turn it over to Pete Teed now. Pete's for the Executive Committee of the Chamber. He's got a few words to say as well, but it's an honor and privilege for me to be here today. So thank you so much. I, I think we honored. have the award right here. Okay. And <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> it says 2020 Paul E. Fisher with FMM Bank and Memorial. And this is very heavy, so. <laughs> thank you so much, Randy. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. I want to turn it over to Pete. Wow. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Fisher family. As you know, we recently celebrated the 20th anniversary of the opening of the Gateway Building. As was the case for many projects in this community, the Gateway would not have happened without Paul Fisher. I had the pleasure of working very closely with Mr. Paul on that project for several years, and I can assure you it was a great pleasure to do so. Among other things, Mr. Paul was the point person for acquiring the land where the Gateway now sits. And then, of course, he led the capital campaign that funded the project. Somehow, he found the time and energy to do that. Was not easy, especially since he was just wrapping up another major campaign at the time. But he did it, and the whole community is grateful. I personally am very grateful. I will never forget that day. I believe it was in November of 1998. The Chamber's annual banquet was that night and we were just short of the campaign goal. Late afternoon, I was on the phone with a local company and they made what most people would consider uh, an unexpected pledge which put us over the top. My office was just a block from the Chamber office at that time and I literally ran that block to tell the Chamber President at the time, Bob Wright, that we made our goal. Naturally, we immediately called Mr. Paul, and what a joy that call was. He had a speech ready for that night for the banquet saying that we were not quite there, a speech he obviously did not want to give. Well, Paul changed that speech, and with great pleasure, he announced to the crowd that we had made the goal. He used one of his favorite words in that speech, miracle. He called it a miracle. Miracles tend to happen when people do the right things, work hard, stay the course, don't give up, and have faith in the one who can do all things. It is no coincidence that miracles seemed to happen when Mr. Paul was involved. Fisher family, God bless you as we continue to mourn the loss of Mr. Paul Fisher, a very special man, and as we celebrate with you the wonderful life that he lived. Thank you. Thank you so and I believe much. we yeah. have some great she needs to hand that to somebody else yeah. so that I can oh, hand her. Oh, can I wonderful. Her? Absolutely. He loved you. He loved Randy. He loved this community. He loved the county, the city. He loved everybody he played eyes on. Well, I thank you so much, and I feel that I, I, I'm so grateful for all, all the outreach I've had and all the wonderful notes, cards, flowers, memorials. It, it's just been overwhelming, and it's, it's a, a great honor for me to accept this for Paul. He didn't struggle at all with all this fundraising. He loved it. He always wanted to leave this place a better place than he found it. And I remember when you came to the chamber the first time, Elaine, and he was trying to put together a big celebration because he was so proud that you were coming. So, And Pete was always there to help him and Randy and all of you folks were so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Just a quick comment. Uh, behind every great community, there is a strong chamber. And I look around and see a lot of faces that have been part of this strong chamber for a long time. And behind every great man, there is a strong woman. Yay. Yay. We're so glad.
blessed to have her here and continuing Mr. Paul's work. And we thank you for recognizing his life and his work, but thank you mostly for sharing it with his rock. From the teleprompter in the boardroom to the parking lot, uh, I have a wonderful announcement that I want to share with uh, the members of the Rowan County Chamber of Commerce and everybody participating in this annual meeting. Um, I'm outside in front of the Gateway Building, which is a critical part of our community. It is home to the Chamber of Commerce, it is home to the Economic Development Commission, Tourism, Communities and Schools, the Arts Council, Three Rivers Land Trust, and the Symphony, but largely it's home to a vision. It's home to leadership and it's home to faith. Those three things came together under the guise and direction of Mr. Paul E. Fisher. We celebrated Mr. Paul E. Fisher's life and his meaning to this community and everything that he has provided for us. The three things that I mentioned, leadership, vision, and faith, Paul embodied those. He was a pillar in our community. He was a strong-willed individual, but he was also a caring and hopeful individual. His leadership and vision brought the community together. It rallied us together to lead to this building, which is more than just a building. It is a home and it is the gateway to our community. But largely he was a man of faith. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. Mr. Paul was always hopeful for this community. He was hopeful for the people, the places, the organizations and the institutions that make Rowan County what it is today. And he was also largely a man of faith. His faith knew that things could come together that he didn't see, that you couldn't see at the time. His initial vision, how could you see this building come to fruition? There was nothing like it in the community. But his faith drove that. He used his vision and his leadership to make that come to be. So it is my pleasure and distinct honor as the owner and operator of the Gateway and in consultation with the Fisher family and on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Commission, that from this day forward, we will be naming this the Paul E. Fisher Gateway Building. We look forward to celebrating this moment later in 2021 with his family and friends, but at this time we did want to share with all of you that we want to recognize his dedication, his leadership, his vision, and most of all his faith in this community and his citizens by naming this the Paul E. Fisher Gateway Building. Thank you, James. We will be proud to enter the newly renamed Paul E. Fisher Gateway Building for work each morning. Speaking of coming to work each morning, we have the best chamber staff team in the country. Please join me in recognizing Erica Church, Sharon Huey, and Tina Jameson Callen. They are a joy with which to work. Thank you again to our sponsors, our board, our volunteers, and our members. Our next Power and Partnership program will be the Leadership Rowan Class Number 28 graduation. It's on May 20th with Steve Chandler talking about the Rowan brand being original. Our Production Enhanced Annual Meeting Zoom webinar was made possible with the help from the talented people at Miller Davis Incorporated. Thank you. In conclusion, please continue to support our local business community. We have one final video for you, and then we're adjourned. Go Team Rowan. In Rowan County, it's not small business or big business. It's just business. But here, business isn't business. It's personal. It's getting up at 4 a.m. and going to bed after midnight. It's my blood, sweat, and tears. It's generation after generation of family tradition. It's helping customers in my hometown grocery store to now serving my community so that others can have food for themselves and their families. It's taking a leap of faith when I wanted to change and wanted to do something no one else had. It's getting the education to prepare for my career and my employer helping me to do that. It's knowing your customers' names or being a regular. It's bringing new innovations and new ways of living to others. It's having a team 
who you call your work family. Or being willing to sacrifice for your employees. It's getting your first big break after a lot of trial and error. It's having the freedom to be as innovative as I can imagine. It's having a community that embraces you, your business, or where you work. In Rowan County, it's the right place to be. An entrepreneur. A community partner. A groundbreaker. In educational training. A chef. A water buffalo farmer. An operations analyst. A mentor. A small business owner. A brewmaster. A team leader. A brand manager. Be a Rowan County original like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like us. <laughs>